There is a plant that's almost magical in its ability to inspire awe and wonder in people of all ages and backgrounds. This is the most famous carnivorous plant of all, Dianaea, the Venus's flytrap. Charles Darwin described it as the most wonderful plant in the world, and here's why. Gotcha! It was called a miracle of nature when it was first studied in the 18th century. This murderous plant can gobble up not just flies, but even vertebrates, such as baby frogs and small lizards. The highly evolved leaves are modified into two lobes that spring shut to gobble up a victim. The trapping mechanism is incredibly complex. A victim has to touch the trigger hairs inside the trap twice to stimulate the leaf to close. This is to minimize accidental triggering by raindrops. So this is a plant that can count. Most people have tried to grow the Venus's flytrap and failed. I know I definitely did. I killed several when I started growing carnivorous plants. But the truth is, they're not hard to grow once you know a few basic rules. Firstly, they need a lot of sunlight. To be honest, the more sunlight, the better. They need water that's very low in nutrients, ideally rainwater, and substrate or soil that's acidic. Particularly peat moss or sphagnum moss is perfect for that. If you can meet those three criteria, they'll grow into really stunning, colorful plants. But if you just put them on a dank, shady windowsill, which is what most people do, and what I did when I started growing them, they'll go smaller and smaller, they'll get green and leggy, and eventually wither away and die. Many people think the Venus's flytrap comes from a jungle somewhere in the tropics. But actually, it's a temperate plant and originates from the pine savannas of North Carolina and South Carolina in the United States. It has even been introduced to the peat bogs of England. The Venus's flytrap actually needs a winter cool period during which it goes dormant. If it's kept warm all year round, it will weaken. And although it's surprising to many growers, the plant is tolerant to sub-zero conditions and often experiences frost and snow during the winter in the wild. While it's really fun to trigger the traps, doing so weakens the plant, and each trap can only open and close a certain number of times. So it's best to leave your flytrap to gobble up prey on its own. Never feed your flytrap pieces of meat. This will cause the leaves to die. Flytraps must catch living prey. You'll notice the husks of dead digested victims within some of the leaves. Don't worry about these. You can leave them inside the traps. They won't affect the growth of your plant at all. If you satisfy all of your flytrap's needs, it will grow vigorously in flower. While the flowers are interesting, they sap the energy from your plant. So it's best to remove the flowers when they first emerge as buds, so your plant can put all of its energy into producing its murderous leaves. Gradually, as your flytrap grows, it will produce divisions Every few years, you can divide the offsets and pop them up separately. Countless millions of flytraps are produced every year and sold in flower shops and garden centers across the world. While there is only one species of flytrap, lots of mutations have been found or bred to create hundreds of cultivars, some of which are really amazing. These include strains with blood red leaves or pure yellow green leaves and giant forms, such as this cultivar, B52, which can produce traps over five centimeters, that's two inches long. Some cultivars have cup traps, or shark's teeth, and bizarre patterns on their leaves. There's even a fly trap that doesn't produce traps at all. Although some people might say this vegetarian carnivorous plant might slightly defeat the point of growing a fly trap. Whichever type of flytrap you grow, remember the basic rules and good luck in growing this most spectacular of plants.